Hello, everyone. We'll begin in just a minute. Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Some quick housekeeping items before we get started. In the Zoom control panel, you will find the chat, raise hand and Q&A features. We encourage you to use the chat to engage with the presenters and audience throughout the presentation. Note that the chats can be sent to hosts only or hosts and all audience members. The raise hand and Q&A features are available if you would like to ask a question. To ask a question directly to presenters, click raise hand and accept the unmute prompt. Your microphone will be muted again after your question is answered. Questions can also be submitted at any time during the presentation via the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. A brief survey will appear on your screen after today's webinar concludes and we appreciate any feedback that you have for us. Today's webinar is being recorded and you'll receive an email with a link to the replay and instructions for viewing on demand. I will now turn it over to our presenters. Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Top Trends in 529 Plans. I'm your host, Paul Curley, Director of Savings Research with ISS Market Intelligence. And I am joined here today with Tim Grell, Executive Director of Ohio's 529 Plan College Advantage. Tim, uh, please say welcome and um, please add any additional information as you'd like for today's webinar. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we always welcome an opportunity to talk about uh, 529 plans. Thank you, Tim. And for today's webinar, uh, it's a continuation of, of our webinar series that we started and launched in, in 2020 to 2022, where the goal is to share best practices, support the community, and to create long-term growth for the industry. And as a quick quick note, we do have the upcoming 529 conference 2022 in October. Please save the date. The location is Ritz Carlton in Orlando. We're going to have a all day training seminar called the 529 Essentials Seminar. We're going to have the 529 conference and the ABLE afternoon summit de dedicated to the ABLE industry. Registration is now open at 529conference.com and the early bird rate is available through June 16th. And for an overview of today's session, today's agenda, we're gonna talk about 529 day reminders, tips and best practices. We're gonna be talking about market data, industry updates and top trends. And we're gonna be taking questions at the end, but also please feel free to ask questions as we'll be uh, addressing them throughout today's session as well. And with that, we'll start off with 529 day reminders, tips and best practices. And as we think about 529 day introduction, overview and goal, Tim, can you, please provide us an overview of, of the 529 day and, and its goals, what we're trying to achieve here today, but just overall, thank you. Yes, thank you, Paul. Yeah, and thanks again for, for joining us. Uh, I know that uh, in our audience is much like whenever we were out and about to talk to people about 529 plans, uh, we probably get uh, you know one of three responses. Uh, when you say 529, uh, folks say, yep, we, we know about it, we've been investing in it, and uh, it works great. Uh, other people will, will say, ah, I know a little bit about it. And still others are, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it some state route or some address or an area code? And so with that in mind, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about here briefly. Uh, if, if you are familiar with 529s, hopefully uh, what we talk about will reinforce your understanding of it. Maybe we'll even tell you something new that's, de been, developing, that's been developing in the industry. Uh, for if you're if you're relatively new to 529, then hopefully some background will will help you understand. 
Uh, what we find when we go out about the talk is, is that maybe people have heard of 529, but a lot of times there's a lot of uh, misinformation or simply misunderstanding about uh, 529s in general. 529 plans have been around for quite a while. Uh, in Ohio, actually, uh, in the late 80s and uh, early 90s, uh, they established or recognized that, that uh, they needed to give Ohio residents an ability uh, to save and invest for education expenses after high school. And so they established a, a guaranteed uh, savings plan. Uh, this was close to new contributions and new accounts in 2003. Uh, then in the mid-90s, like uh, many other states started, Ohio passed legislation to establish a variable savings plan. Ohio has two parts to that. Uh, there's a direct plan and an advisor plan. Uh, other states uh, followed and to the point where we are today that every state in the country has a 529 plan with the exception of Wyoming. Uh, the, these plans are state entities. Uh, they're structured different ways. The office size will vary. Uh, we, we in Ohio fall under the Ohio Department of Higher Education. Uh, we have a 31 person full time staff uh, here in, in our office. Uh, other uh, offices fall under the Treasurer of State, and uh, there are some that are independent state agencies. So, before we can get into why, uh, what is a 529, I think we have to ask ourselves and, be, and frame any conversation as the why of 529. Uh, Student loan debt is, is the enemy here. Uh, it's eclipsing uh, $1.7 trillion of uh, you know, debt in our, in our country. And many people will just default to taking out loans to pay for those education expenses after high school. Uh, our vision here is a, a nation where families are better able to afford college. And I think uh, regardless of the plan, there, there will be some variation of that and some goal or objective that sounds like that for, for any plan. And, and so many, instead of this option, you know, if you, let me frame it this way. If you, um, you know, select a school, you know, whether that's a trade school, technical school, two-year, four-year public private university, uh, you, you're, you're committed to, uh, you know, the, the objective of receiving a degree or a certificate, you come out to an exciting career opportunity, uh, everything's going great, only to be scrapped for the next 10, 15, 20 years with student loan debt. And this would come at the expense, could come at the expense of saving for uh, retirement, saving to buy a home, maybe considering getting married, starting a family. Uh, when children come along, uh, you're paying off your, your debt. Maybe there isn't, aren't resources to save for the children coming along. We would submit, and I think any of us in the, in the 529 business would uh, urge you to consider uh, paying some upfront and, and in the form of, uh, of a 529 plan. And a 529 plan is simply the opportunity to invest uh, after-tax dollars into stock market options. These investments grow tax-free and whenever they're withdrawn for qualified expenses, there's not a, a tax complication or implication. And, and a lot of people are daunted by the, the cost, and this causes a, a paralysis. And, you know, or I'll get to it, or we'll never be able to save that much. What we would urge people to consider is start modestly. Uh, maybe a small investment. Many of the plans you can start with the lowest $25 uh, you know, as far as an investment, and you can go as high as you want. Uh, maybe your goal is to save 40%, you know, in a 529, and these other resources will come into, uh, into play to pay for the rest of education. But it's, it's very important to stop or to start and not to procrastinate. Uh, a lot of times people are looking for the best conditions to, you know, to invest. It's uh, the old saying, uh, a farmer who waits for perfect weather never plants. Uh, maybe the opportunity was missed whenever a baby was born uh, to open a 529 account. Maybe all of a sudden that beneficiary, that child's in kindergarten or middle school, were often asked is when's the best time or is it ever too late to you know, start investment? No, it's never too late. And the, the, the thing to keep in mind is to do it today. The conditions will never be perfect, but you know, the important thing is to start and, and, uh, and to take things from there. 
Uh, qualified expenses, I, I mentioned that. Uh, these include tuition and fees, room and board, books, computers, and recently what's been added to uh, qualified expenses are apprenticeships and recognizing student loan debt, you can take up to $10,000 per beneficiary towards repaying student loan debt. Uh, what, what are uh, some of the comparisons are getting you towards uh, you know, tips and best practices? Uh, whenever you say 401k, almost to a person, folks know you're talking about retirement. When you say 529, you, you don't always get that, that response. What we would endeavor is to get to a point where people readily recognize what a 529 plan is, what it isn't, what it can be used for. And at the end of the day, if they say, I'm going to look at other options, you know, or I have other resources that I'm going to use and not solely relying on loans, then, then we've, we've won the day. And, and that, that's what, what we would want to get to. Um, as far as, as, as best practices are looking around, it's like any, any purchase or investment that you do, shop around. Uh, we we'd urge you to look at your, your state. Many states offer a, a tax incentive for residents who invest in their plan. Here in Ohio, uh, you can take up to $4,000 per beneficiary uh, you know, off of your Ohio taxable income. Now, that's not a ceiling or a cap on what you can invest in your 529. Uh, it, and if you would go over that, in Ohio, you have unlimited carryover. So look at your, your state, what incentives they offer you know, to, you know, for a 529. Look, look at the long term. Uh, you know, you're, you're not, this is a, a long haul, uh, albeit it's not like retirement where you have uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years maybe of investments. You're probably looking at a 10 to 20 year uh, investment time period. But you don't want to look at a plan that's a flash in a pan that, that uh, has a one-year performance that, that's great. But how about three, five, ten years? How is that plan performing? Uh, look, look at the agency. Uh, can you trust it? Uh, our agency is called the Ohio Tuition Trust Authority. Uh, we take that trust aspect of it very seriously. People are trusting us with their money, their funds. And while stock market investments cannot um, guarantee you know, the, the return, uh, the, the portfolios are developed, uh, they're, they're very deliberate uh, and keeping in mind with our consultants, with our partners, you know, stock market volatility uh, to create the conditions for the best return possible for, for our investors. Another part uh, to consider is governance. Uh, we have an 11 person investment board uh, by Ohio law, these individuals have to have banking, accounting, financial planning background, uh, and they have the ultimate decision on our portfolio lineup. Uh, I would submit any good plan would, would, would have that. And what is the composition of the board and, and the, you know, the way that they, they manage and do their due diligence? Uh, for investors, look, look, at, look at schools. Uh, again, shop, shopping around, what's the best value for education? Uh, we've, we've heard stories of, uh, of individuals, say, from here in Ohio. I, I, have, a, I have a friend who's, who's rather animated, and uh, his daughter was looking at, at schools, and she wanted to go to Florida to a school, and uh, it, you know, that was one of her dream schools. Uh, his line was, my money is a terrible thing to waste, and, and so he sat down with her and said, look, Here's what we've saved. If you choose an in-state opportunity, uh, we can pretty much cover this. If you go out of state to what you you think you want to pursue, we maybe can do a year and maybe maybe some change, a semester, a half a semester on it. The rest is going to be on on you. Uh, fast forward, uh, this person chose an education opportunity here in Ohio. Uh, came out, uh, works for uh, a great company. Uh, uh, with uh, you know putting her marketing degree into into play, and uh, you know hasn't hasn't looked back on it. She's none the worse for wear, you know, because she didn't get to go to her quote unquote dream school. Um, another uh, thing to look at in, in selecting you know degrees, which are going to pay for school, how much loan you're going out, what what is the the debt ratio to what the earning potential is on the other end. 
uh, you know, that, that's something to, to consider. If, if you invest in a 529 and, you know, you, you've uh, been a very aggressive and, and your plan's grown, then I guess you don't have to worry about that. But if you're going to go the, the, the loan, loan route, uh, you definitely need to con consider that. We encourage people to consider when investing in, in 529s or look, look at the other options. Uh, there's 529 plans, there's uh, everyday bank accounts, there's uh, covered AO education, UGMA, UTMA, Roth IRAs, educational savings bonds. All have pros and cons. But one feature that I'd like to emphasize about the 529 is the account owner owns the account. The account owner owns the account. Now, the intentions of these, these other investment options may be you know, set up, they're, they're intended for education opportunities after high school, uh, only to find that, that some of them, whenever the beneficiary comes of age, um, it becomes theirs. And, uh, and they may want to pull that out to backpack um, the national parks in the, our country here, or, or to use it for something else other than education. Uh, the 529 has no shelf life, and the account owner owns the account. Uh, another point of uh, uh, financial aid. Uh, some people feel that financial or having a 529 is a deterrent to uh, financial aid. 5.64%. 5.64%. So what's the perspective of that? You have $10,000 in your 529 account. Only $564 of that counts towards, you know, in the FAFSA calculations for the estimated uh, financial contribution for, for you know, a family. So it's, it's very minimal in the long run, you're gonna come out. Um, just uh, in closing, I'd like to highlight some key themes here for uh, 2022. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, you know, the, the apprenticeships have been added and, and student loan repayment. Uh, in our plan, uh, we're, we're excited uh, this spring, we, we adjusted our, our glide path. Uh, our principal partner in our direct space is, um, is Vanguard, uh, along with Dimensional Fund Advisors, and we have a fifth third banking product. Uh, we uh, went to a target enrollment portfolio. And so for age base, uh, if people, the investors that select the age base, uh, this, this uh, is much, works much like retirement. For instance, if, if a beneficiary was born this year in 2022, they would be in a 2040 fund. And what this does is uh, the investments are very aggressive in the, on the onset. And as you approach that, that target uh, date, uh, whenever the, uh, it's anticipated that the beneficiary will be using those resources for education expenses, it becomes uh, more conservative. Uh, we're really excited about that. And we, we think this will yield uh, great returns for our, our investors. We also launched, uh, and other plants have, have uh, starting to do this as well, uh, a mobile application for your, your phone. It's the reality of today. We, we have, uh, you know, we do everything on our phones uh, to include our banking, our, our financial uh, you know, planning and, and monitoring. And so we launched the Ready Save app, 529 app in November. Uh, it's been very popular. Uh, we started out with just uh, the very fundamentals of, of people can, what people can use to contribute and to, uh, you know, to manage their, their account. Uh, we're looking this year to add more features to it to get to the point uh, where many other financial institutions and banking institutions are on that. Um, we have uh, some exciting things uh, as far as uh, this 529 day, uh, we, we, might, we mentioned, mentioned on that. Uh, we'll be launching a $10,000 giveaway, love to give away money. And uh, these are college savings awards. Uh, this will be done in conjunction with our uh, one of our pro sports partners, the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, you, you can uh, uh, it'll run through the summer, and this will be accumulated uh, with uh, uh, at the end of the season with an on-field presentation at one of the Reds' home games, and again a ten thousand dollar contribution. You don't need to be uh, from Ohio. You don't need to uh, be a Reds fan. You don't need to be a 529, Ohio 529 uh, customer, uh, you know, to, to enroll into, into this. And uh, later this summer, we'll do a similar giveaway with uh, our partners, uh, the Cleveland Guardians uh, as, as well. Um, with that, uh, I, I could go on and on. I see Paul nodding. I think we need to move on. I'll be very happy to answer any questions you may have in the Q&A 
or during the, the chat. Uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in and uh, you know for your interest in 529. Uh, th this is uh, uh, again the day that you, know, we, you, you smile about all oh, these industry created days. But this one I think is, is vitally important because again, we want to get to the point where we just saturate the country where everybody knows what a 529 is, what it isn't, what it can do, what it can't do, and to make a very uh, smart or intelligent uh, decision as to whether to invest in a plan or, or not. So back to you, Paul. Thank you, Tim. And uh, you know, before I jump in, you know, thank you for the questions, uh, Galena, Donna, Claire. Just a, a lot of great questions come in on the chat, and, and please feel free to continue to have them in. And as we go into the spring and into the summer, it's great to hear about all the the different um, you know. Um, you know, great work you do with, with, with the um, Cincinnati uh, Reds and all the different baseball teams. And I guess your, your team also did a, uh, worked with the um, Columbus uh, hockey team as well. I, I guess not to get, not to um, show them the, the love as well as, as we're in the off season. T Tim, do you want to mention the, the NHL uh, hockey um, collaboration as well or? Yeah, so I, I, thank you. Uh, yeah, we, we target our marketing into three distinct areas. We, we uh, direct our efforts to employers, uh, again, to raise uh, you know, the awareness of uh, just talked about. Uh, we, we, uh, we direct uh, our efforts to schools and libraries. And then this area we call special events. And we, we have partnerships with uh, uh, virtually all the professional sports teams here in Ohio, but we're just not uh, pro sports fans. Uh, you know, we, we, we direct those because we have a lot of relationships with their community foundations. And you go out to the ballparks and stadiums and you, you look around like these teams, they wanna grow their fan base. We wanna grow the 529 fan base. And so there's a great power in the, in the co-branding you know, with these. But we also have partnerships with the Ohio History Connection, the Great Lakes Science Center, uh, the Invention League, the Invention Convention here, here in Ohio. And to the question about the, the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, you know, we're coming out of uh, out of COVID like everybody. Uh, we're getting our marketing sea legs back back on us, and we were able this past season to do uh, in stadium, in arena uh, presentations. And so, at the end of April, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, make up for the past three years uh, with presentations. And so, we we had the big check presentations. Uh, it was uh, on the jumbotron in the arena. And so the visual of giving away uh, $30,000 of college savings awards was, was very, very powerful. Uh, and then uh, again, like we, we do, what I mentioned with the Reds and, and the, you know, the, the Guardians, it's, uh, you know, the jackets were just wonderful. Uh, we, we had a suite. And so the families got to enjoy the games. We've completely ruined kids because they think that's the way you go to a suite to watch any of these, these sporting events. Uh, you have your bathroom right there. You have food and beverages. And, and uh, it's just a, a wonderful way to watch the event. And, uh, and again, with our, our marketing, uh, with our partners, you know, the, uh, in this case, the Blue Jackets, uh, this co-branding is very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Tim. The goal from my perspective on 529 Day is just to raise awareness and understanding about the importance of saving and saving efficiently for education and career development and, and education and training. So thank you, thank you so much, Tim. And, and um, I, as we go through the, the slides, I'll, I'll try to pull you in see if there's any color commentary on, on the upcoming slides. But in the meantime, I, I see there's a lot of questions coming in on, on the chat. So, so we'll, we'll toggle on, on and off to uh, swap, swap for a little bit. Um, in, in terms of the, the national numbers for, for the market data for, for 529 college savings plans, uh, you know, for this first quarter, 2022, we saw an increase in the number of accounts. In this quarter, there was a 1% uh, increase of, of accounts, broadly speaking, and there was an increase in gross, gross sales money coming into the 529 space, um, probably the highest uh, on record for, for the uh, first quarter. So, so definitely 529 plans are becoming more and more. Um, you know, popular. There was a, a slight dip in the um, in the assets overall for the industry. Just you know, more of a reflection of the performance market performance that that was taking place in the first quarter. But you know, broadly speaking, we can see at least for myself, um, we've been covering you know five nine plans since uh, two thousand two. I covered started covering five nine plans in in two thousand ten. So so it's been growing rapidly over the years. Moving on for for a moment over to able accounts. Uh, which are also called 529A for ABLE accounts. ABLE accounts are help families um, save and pay efficiently for um, you know, families with, with disabilities. Very 
very similar uh, legislative um, um, tax structure. So, so we do cover that product as well, but it is a relatively new product. That being said, the, the accounts increased um, you know, 6.7% in the first quarter. Assets were also increasing. Um, the slight, slight difference about ABLE accounts is that the investment options are much more target risks. Risk, and from, by that I mean conservative, moderate, and aggressive. Uh, where 529 plans tend to be target date or, or enrollment date, so, so gliding towards a date such as enrollment towards an educational program. Um, but for ABLE accounts, 64% of the assets were in, in conservative uh, target risk options, and the assets continued to grow. Talking about money coming in, 65% um, of the accounts were making contributions, 18% of which were making uh, their contributions automatically. There's an interesting... Um, provision for able to work. So incremental ability to save more for, for those that, that are working. Um, and um, you know, so 1.2% of accounts uh, of, of contributions were coming through the employer channel money out. So uh, um, roughly 16% of accounts were taking distribution. So, so broadly speaking, money's coming in, money's being saved and money is being used for able accounts. And so they are being successfully used to help uh, families save and pay for qualified expenses as well. In, in terms of industry updates, um, there is a continuation of, of positive uh, beneficial legislation taking place within the 529 space. There was a bill introduced, not implemented or, or live, but introduced, uh, still a long way between introduction and actually implementation of, you know, broadly speaking, um, uh, Senate Bill uh, 4103 that would allow for, with a lot of uh, different constraints, but broadly speaking, the ability to roll over, over 529 assets over to IRAs, the actual implementation reading, uh, language of, of the ruling is, is still to be announced, but broadly speaking, there is um, you know capabilities on the horizon to be able to roll over 529 assets over to IRAs, and that, that would be a, a great benefit. Good good feedback so far um, to that. But a lot of this other, um, the, the other bullet points on, on this slide really kind of show about big picture kind of uh, adjustments taking place. For example, in, in June, there may there will be a, a live new program uh, being offered front by Census and uh, Goldman Sachs in the state of Arizona in June. Uh, we also saw a, a in Oregon the MFS 5 plan change record keepers to Vestwell in May. Um, on the more distribution broker dealer home office front, uh, Raymond James converted the Hartford Smart 5 plan to its Omnibus platform. Broadly speaking, makes the um, uh, usage of um, usage and reporting uh, for that plan for that. Um, broker dealer home office easier to do. Uh, people on the move, so, so New Mexico has hired a new executive director, um, Natalie Cordova, uh, CPA. So, so she um, has been, um, is her announcement, her appointment has been announced. And also in April, a census uh, released a press release, um, just basically um, announcing that the, um, you know, the um, addition of, of, of two, two folks to their team, uh, Martha Slit and uh, DJ Johnson. On the ABLE side, there's uh, the ABLE Age Adjustment Act. You know, if if passed, would increase the age of onset for eligibility for opening an ABLE account from 26 years old to 24, uh, 26 years old to 46 years old for age of onset in terms of eligibility to open ABLE account. That bill has been introduced, and there's been um, that right there. That slide shows the status board of of basically the. Um, like the support so far to date for those two bills in the Senate, in the House. Uh, People on the move, uh, Eric Akbonik has been transitioned to um, National Association of State Treasurers. And also we have two additional announcements, uh, one with, uh, two with Vestwell, one is with Steve Job, uh, Senior Vice President, 529 and ABLE Product Management. I've been um, working with him a long time in, in the 529 space and, and for uh, Mary Rubinus also joined uh, Vest, Vestwell and she's been a speaker at, at the ABLE uh, afternoon summit in the past. So congrats and, and kudos to Steve and Mary. Top five trends in, in 2022. The, the first one is the value of education continues to increase. Broadly speaking, as, as the more education leads to higher income. So there is, um, there's, there's definitely a straight and direct, um, you know, value to be had in terms of just, you know, more education leads to higher income. And even that, even through to, uh, the 2020 to 2022 market cycle, that, that uh, relation uh, continued as well. This, uh, this is a chart that shows unemployment rates by level of education. Broadly speaking, the, the higher the level of education, the lower the level of unemployment. Um, and we can see the middle of the chart of, of 2008 timeframe where um, even though there was an increase on, in unemployment, that those levels were, as I like to call, layer cake, if you will, <laughs> um, in terms of just that, that order 
of more education um, led to lower levels of, levels of unemployment. And we saw that again in, in 2020, 2021, where there was an increase in unemployment and then, and then subsequent decrease at, at the tail end of, of 2021. Um, and so like more education leads to lower unemployment even through this most recent cycle. So the value of education continues to, to increase. The second trend is that the 529 utilization continues to increase. Broadly speaking, the accounts uh, increased. There was 15.8 uh, 15 million 529 accounts as of the um, as of March 2022. 14.9 um, million in 529 savings accounts. 0.9 uh, million in 529 prepaid plans. So broadly speaking, 529 plans continue to, to grow in terms of usage. But this chart really you know comes from our, our most recent survey of, of parents in April 2022. Um, which shows that 26% of parents earning over 25,000 a year uh, save for their children's education with a 529 plan. 45% are saving for uh, future educational expenses, but just not with a 529 plan, such as a bank or brokerage account. Um, and 29% and are not saving for, for college at all. But you know, bro broadly speaking, uh, lo and behold, one fourth of uh, over one fourth of parents are saving for. Um, future educational expenses with uh, 529 plans as of April 2022. So broadly speaking, 529 usage continues to increase. The, the third uh, element, which is, you know, which is great to see is just the ease of use is on the rise. Um, you know, broadly speaking, if we look at the entire cycle from educational content uh, expanding for YouTube channels, newsletters, and blogs, and, and the o OTTA does a great job in terms of just uh, creating and putting out to the world uh, YouTube videos, newsletters, and blogs, and all these different articles to create that, that buzz and, and overall increase overall awareness uh, for 529 plans and the need to save and pay efficiently for future educational costs. So, um, you know, once, once someone, you know, is aware of 529 plans and, and, and you know, looks to open up an account. There's a number of great calculators out there. Uh, OTTA, for example, has a college savings planner, cost of waiting, tax um, benefit tools. So just, you know, really analyzing like, you know, all the different um, ways to, um, you know, save and pay efficiently for, for education. So, so a, lot of, a lot of educational content to build awareness, calculators and tools once you're in the decision-making process, once the account is opened, um, just all the different maintenance, um, functionalities is there as well with that ready save 510 mobile app um, and it does have gifting functionality so once the account is open just making the um you know money come in easier um you know by way of mobile app and then once once we're in the um usage stage there's been a um an announcement this year about flywire partnering with a census to digitize digitize the distribution process uh from the 510 account into paying directly uh, to the colleges. So uh, across the entire life cycle of saving, paying, and repaying the, the cost of, of education, um, 529s are becoming easier to use, and that is great to see. The fourth one is, you know, and as I as I kind of put it from the perspective of just, you know, with, with all the different market volatility going on, and, and this being a long 18 here, uh, time horizon for most parents in terms of saving and paying for college, the value of automatic contributions helping families to save is, is just so important. Roughly one third of contributions coming in are coming in automatically by way of automatic contributions and, and roughly 37% of accounts have automatic contributions set up. Um, it's just one great defense for you know, saving through all the different market cycles, life cycles, and it's just a, a great way to make one decision and, and set and, and forget. Um, I was listening to the to the audiobook yesterday, not, not really thinking about it, but uh, The Automatic Millionaire or, or The Latte Factor by Dave, David Bach, great book to to read or, or listen to um, audibly, but you know it's just the value of automatic contributions, making one decision to, to save and pay for education and, and setting it up automatically is just one way to go. Um, and one perspective that I really like to think about is that the average amount uh, coming in automatically is $190 um, per month, which is $6 a day. So, so, so from, for $6 a day, that is, you know, you know, all that is needed to really help just set up and, and, and get one uh, started towards, you know, creating a, a um, college financial, you know, plan uh, over the over time. But there's, there's a lot of different sort of ideologies about just finding different ways to, to pivot money use, money currently spent to saving for college, um, you know, for example, paying for, for you know, childcare at a, at a, you know, before uh, kindergarten, for example, and, and pivoting that, that money over from paying for, for you know, daycare or to, uh, future educational expenses, a lot of different ways to really uh, save on that $6 a day. And of course, for David Bach, it's much more of a latte factor of 
you know, just, you know, not spending money on coffee or, or little different uh, latte factors, for example. But, um, you know, I, I just think that there's so much, um, you know, um, rebuttal to be said about the, um, you know, the, the weather uh, happening today broadly, but also just the value uh, of all the different ups and downs for the value of automatic contributions. And as we think about the spring and get heading towards spring, uh, for my family, we went to uh, Carbon County, Poconos, Pennsylvania. It's, uh, you know, just an area that is, um, just has a lot of hardworking, you know, families. And uh, I, I just thought it was something that sort of grabbed me from, from the road of really the, the positioning of 529 plans being tr transitioned just as a 529 college plan to college and career. So in, in, in the font's kind of small, but it, but the title is 529 College and Career Savings Program uh, for families looking to um, save and pay efficiently, not just for college, but apprenticeships and all these different ways to really help families train and retrain. And, um, you know, as we sort of enter this, this post, um, you know, uh, COVID pandemic world where, um, you know, it's just so important to tool and retool um, throughout one, one's career. But, you know, broadly speaking, the, the broadening the usage of 510 plans uh, from college to education and career, it's, it's a um, storyboard that is um, important, not just for 529 users and 529, non-529 savers, but non-savers as well. I'll, I'll, I'll probably pull in uh, Tim to ask, ask you the question of, of, you know, just because it is, um, you know, striking to me, 32% of non-savers currently say that they would be likely to start saving if learned how to use 529s for apprenticeship. And I was curious, Tim, how does your team um, currently just, you know, broadly speaking, help families to, um, you know, learn about this, this, um, this capability of, of using 529 plans for, for apprenticeship. It's, it is new, but it, uh, outreach is underway. And I was just curious about how your team helps to get that message out there. Well, it is any like in, in forms like this and any uh, time we have the opportunity uh, to discuss 529s, we, we do add it like we did here, the updates that apprenticeships are now uh, included. And uh, it, it, as you're, to your point, th this gets passed and like the, the, bull, the uh, billboard that you, you shared here, uh, you know, just in it ourselves, we, we, we're college advantage and people automatically think that, but this is for trade technical schools and any education entity that has a federal code. And then it, recognizing, uh, as you noted, the, the post COVID time and infrastructure bills that have been passed and, and this demand that is going to be for, uh, you know, for plumbers and electricians and welders and bricklayers and, and all these, these other trade type uh, entities, but the apprenticeships also, they're, they're in the medical and IT fields as well. And, and so this just expands that. And so we, uh, you know, through our, our communications with our blogs, uh, with, with uh, conversations that we have with people, uh, you know, we, you know we, we invite their attention to this. And, and this is a, a very real uh, uh, item and there, there could be expenses associated to it. And, and here, uh, you know, it gets to that point whenever, you know, that, that bulletin board has this uh, young child. And, you know, when, we, you know, people ask all the time, it's like, I don't know what, what this baby's going to grow up to be, uh, we don't know. And maybe they will be a welder. Maybe they will be a doctor. Maybe they will be a, a nurse. Maybe they'll be a teacher. Who knows? But but uh, five two nines are are readily available to help uh, with any expenses associated with those programs. Yeah, I I, I could not agree more. I know uh, in discussion with my cousins as well, and you know, in terms of them just asking, well, what if they don't go to college? It's like, well, it can be also used for apprenticeships. And and I know I know for. For him, he um, his parents didn't go to go to college, and, and so it's just you know for him it was a reassurance that that I want them to get, be trained up in, in some way uh, down the road. But I I do have an uncle Paul who's a, who's a welder and had a great career over a long time, and of course there's a lot of a lot of the tools and training, and, and my mother is a, a nurse, so with all the different credentials and training that, that they do as well, it's a, it's a timely topic, and um, especially as as we all sort of retool in this this um this new new world going forward and, and uh, so we, we look forward to it um, and for for now I'll, I'll jump over to the question and answer I, I do see the questions uh, jumping up I, I didn't know if, if you Tim wanted to address any, any of the, the questions what I'll read through or or we can take a pause and um, go yeah, yeah, if, I, if I could could Paul very very quickly I know uh, our, our folks are trying to keep up with it and please if we, if we don't get your your question either live or, or in the chat, uh, we, we will capture that and reach out to you, you know, through your email to answer your question, all, all good questions. 
Uh, but uh, one, one that came up, and, and this is uh, like a little bit to the point we we're talking here. What if you don't use your, your 529? What, what are the options? And I, I didn't uh, mention it, and I, I, I'm glad I can now. Uh, very flexible what you can do with your 529. As I mentioned, there's no shelf life, so it's not like whenever a beneficiary reaches a particular age that this 529 turns into a pumpkin. It, it can go on indefinitely. Uh, maybe you know, whenever the beneficiary graduates from high school, they're not sure what they're going to do, and they may decide a few years later, well, your 529 is still working and, and growing until that time uh, comes. Uh, maybe you know, there are other resources or, or just flat out that person is just not going to need uh, funding for education, then very easily to transfer among other family members. And the Eternal Revenue Code, that's where the 529 comes from, 529 and Congress, you know, establishes the, the law, you know, as far as your, your 529 has a very broad definition of what a family member is. Uh, this is anyone by blood or even by marriage. And we're talking first cousins to son-in-law you know, and everything in, in between. And at the end of the day, there's no family members to transfer it to, or you don't want to use it for yourself, which you can certainly do. And you decide to withdraw those funds, that would be an unqualified withdrawal. And uh, you would pay, remember, it was after tax dollars that were, were going into there. So you'd pay only tax on your earnings and you would pay a 10% penalty, much like what if, if you took an early withdrawal from a retirement account. So a lot of flexibility shouldn't be a limitation as to that, you know, that, that open-ended question, what if we don't uh, use that? Agreed. Uh, and, um, great, great, great points. Uh, as a quick um, response to Joni's question about, uh, you know, someday, someday was actually relabeled to Vest Wells. So that was just more of an administrative um, you know, shift. That, that's a um, public announcement there on, on that side. Um, for, there, there was a, a question about the, um, you know, too late, you know, is it, is it, is there a scenario where it's, it's, you know, too late to save? And, and, and I, I know for me and, and Tim, you, you touched upon it as well, but, but every, every, every dollar, you know, counts. I, I, I think, um, let's just say over, you know, um, you know, th 30 years, the, uh, you know, current interest rates, I mean, it, you, you, like a dollar saved is actually more than, than a, than a dollar earned in, in, in principal plus interest. So it's, it's actually, you know, it's, it's never it's never too early. It's never too late. I, I just think that there's a lot of different ways to make it in, incremental. You know, ways to, to save save and save more, save efficiently because each and every dollar you know saved along the way is, is more than the more than a dollar down down the road. Uh, but but Tim, any any thoughts and feedback about you know is there ever a, a, a case where it's where it's too late or? I, I would say no. Uh, obviously, if a beneficiary uh, is in, in high school, you don't have. A lot of time going into that, but you can be, uh, you know, creative. That, that's why I, I would urge you to have a plan, both in selecting that educational opportunity, but but also as far as financing. Maybe you are late to it. Uh, keep in mind that loans may be coming into play. So maybe a scenario is that uh, the you know the beneficiaries in high school, and so you're looking you know, for resources towards the back end of that education experience or, or even to build, build up some funds to help offset that student, student loan debt. So you might, might wanna do that. Uh, it, there, there are just uh, many different approaches and, and I would submit that it's, it's uh, never too late. Uh, if you recall too, uh, if your state has uh, the, the tax benefit, you can take advantage of that. That helps you with a little bit of savings a, a, as well. And so, um, you know, don't, um, uh, I, I don't, don't, it's not hopeless. And, uh, and I, again, I encourage you to, whatever time it is, just start today. Yep. Um, and I, I think as we sort of get, get closer to then, you know, what, one, one question or, or just, just thought that, that I've seen is just, you know, the, the value of the, of the employer channel, the employer channel, you know, what one can, you know, work, work somewhere, set up an automatic contribution from, from their employer, um, say a certain percentage in, in, the, in their account and, it's just a great way to you know help families to um, you know save over the long term, but you know throughout the, the market cycles, right? It's it, it's sort of like the thinking, what what you don't see, you don't spend. But um, you know, Tim, it would be great to kind of get your, your take on on uh, families using that um, you know enrolling through, through through the employer channel. It is, and and uh, it, the employers that we've encountered are supported to the payroll deduction. And, uh, and you, to Paul's point, uh, you know, you have that 
Well, like we when we did, I, I, I use a is the first thing I did. Our, our children were born in ninety two, ninety three, and uh, the five two nines weren't weren't around. But we we had the expectation that they would do something after after high school, and so we opened mutual funds. And uh, you know, I was in the the army at the time. Uh, very modestly, I I would start with fifty dollars that came out of my my payroll, uh, out of sight, out of mind. And then uh, as things got paid off or as uh, maybe we got a pay raise, our economic situation improved, we would increase that. And we were, we were very uh, disciplined that we never raided those funds. And so fast forward to the time came that uh, uh, to draw on that, the downside is we pay taxes whenever those gains, and you know, we, we pay taxes on it. If we had a 529, we wouldn't have done that. And whenever we withdrew the funds for those education expenses, we pay taxes on it. But, but all along, uh, one, our kids knew that, that there were funds available, so they knew that that's the expectation. We didn't necessarily sit down at the dinner table every night and say, okay, you know, you're going to go to college, and here's how the college fund's going or anything like that. They, they knew that, and I, I think that helped, you know, to um, uh, manage the expectations and ensure their, their success. And, uh, you know, if you just, just set that up and uh, Paul's talking about foregoing certain things, maybe it, it, if it's not a latte, it's, uh, it's pizza or it's, you know, some, some other thing that, uh, that maybe you do without to, to direct the, the funds towards your 529, do the payroll deduction, and you'll be pleased because what that does is reinforce your decision to, to invest. Uh, we hear that oftentimes that, wow, I just start out very modestly. My account's doing really good. I, we, that wasn't too painful. We can up that a little bit more. Uh, we, we thought we could save 30, 40% you know, the expenses. Yeah, maybe we can do better. We can get over 50%. And, and so all, all that you know, encourages and, and uh, buttresses that. Uh, really quickly, you know, we had a question about the market. And yeah, it, it, is, it is tough right now, uh, not only for people in the 529 who are looking to draw on their 529 uh, funds to pay for those education savings, but people in retirement as well. Uh, you know, look at that, have, have a plan. Uh, you know, you, you may be delayed, you know, because uh, we, we can't guarantee it, but we feel very confident that the market will come back. Uh, if you go back to March of 2020, some of the worst days in market history occurred when COVID hit. And people who backed out of the market, uh, you know, I, I think made a, may not then make the best decision because and come April, there were some of the best days in the market history that came about. Now, inflation, uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, various things that are factoring on the market, you know, maybe we won't see that, that rebound in the next, uh, in the weeks or a month, in a few months here. But uh, one, I, I, I would urge to keep the faith and if you if you can avoid you know delaying and withdrawing from that, then then okay. Uh, an option that we have we have a fifth third banking product, uh, and so you can have a, a 529 savings account or CD. And if you want to pull funds to help preserve your wealth, uh, the the interest rates are better than their regular past you know savings and and CD rates. Uh, you can help preserve, and you have the banking insurance. Uh, so there, there are different ways to get out of that, but uh, I, I wanted to make note of that as well. I definitely agree. And, I, and as a last uh, statement, I know for, for me in closing, you know, 529 plans, they, the uh, usage has been expanding, the demographics have been expanding, expanding. the product's been, you know, getting um, easier to use, and the investment lineups are, are becoming more institutional strength, which is great. From a marketing perspective, we are broadening the, the understanding, the usage, and the, and the demographics. And, and broadly speaking, um, you know, on the topic of, of distribution, that the, the product is becoming easier to use. And, and so it's, um, you know, with everything going on on the world, it's great to see that 529 plans are are, are growing, are, are are strengthening, getting broader, more usage, more and usage. I, I know, I know. For me, I, I appreciate the, the time today. And, and Tim, do you have any um last um last comments as you know to close out the, the 529 day? Uh, 2022 webinar. Uh, again, thank you for joining us and thank you for your, your, your questions. I, uh, I wish we could get to them live right now or, or through the chat. And again, if we don't, we, 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 will, uh, we will respond. They're, they're very, very important questions. And uh, again, we, we appreciate your, your interest and, and wanting to be knowledgeable about 529. And just uh, uh, finally, I just have to say uh, happy 529 to everybody. And uh, uh, Get started today if you haven't already. 
Sounds great. Th thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, everyone. Happy 529 Day. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye. And that concludes today's webinar. Just a reminder that there is a survey that will pop up on your screen afterwards. We appreciate any feedback that you can share with us. Thanks, everyone.